responsibility to yourself. Speak responsibility to yourself. Even if you are afraid, speak it to yourself. Even if you are ashamed, speak it to yourself. Even if you are embarrassed, speak it to yourself. Amen. It is said it is possible even if I don't know how. Let me say this. What you speak to yourself is much more important than what you allow people to say. chapter 4 from verse 20 to 21 or 20. he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith giving glory to God and being fully confused King James says fully persuaded next script next next verse that he that what he had promised he was able also to perform and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness praise the law the bible tells us that abraham was fully convinced fully persuaded amen folks for this brief period i want you to just give me your heart because what i'm about to share with you is very important faith as we know it is confidence in the integrity of God it's confidence in the integrity of God it's when we have a full persuasion that God will perform will fulfill what he says in his word as far as God is concerned faith is extremely important because faith is the nature of God and anyone who is faith, who has faith rather, or let me say faith itself is flawless, faith is blameless. Anything that is achieved by faith is blameless. Nobody can fault faith. Nobody can blame faith. Because himself, as a God, operates and functions by faith. So he equally wants you and me to also function by faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says, the just, that is you and I, must walk by faith, must live by faith. So based on this foundation, this money, this fundamental knowledge this morning, I want to talk to you about turning on your faith and turning off your fear. Turning on faith and turning off fear. Turning on faith and turning off fear. Amen. Listen to me very well. One thing is very certain in life. Life is not determined by circumstances. Life is not determined by situations that happen unto you. Life is determined by you as a person. Whatever happens in your life, it's not determined by the circumstances. It's not determined by the situation. Not by your experiences, but by what you do unto it. Praise the Lord. Please look up. For instance, if you step into a room at about 8 p.m. or maybe 9 p.m., you enter into a room. The first thing you're going to observe is what? It's darkness. Am I right about that? It's darkness. That is the first environment, the first moment, the first thing you observe is darkness. Now, what happens in that room at that moment is not determinant by what you observe. It's not that situation you met there. The darkness inside that room is not what will determine what will happen to you in that room. You can choose to look at your right side, feel the wall, turn the switch on, and there will be light. Am I right about that? Yes. You can choose that. And at the same time, you can choose 
to leave the switch alone and the darkness will persist. And if you choose to move forward in that room, you might stumble, you might hit things, you might be uncertain of what is going to happen, unsure of what is going to happen. And because it's darkness, you will be afraid that you can knock something down. You'll be afraid that you can enjoy yourself. As a matter of fact, you're afraid that you can die. But when you turn on the light, you have control of everything. When you turn on the light, you have a direction to go. It's the same thing in our ordinary life. It is not what happens to you that determines what you do. In the same vein that we step into a room, sometimes some dark moments happen in our lives. And when dark moments happen to you, what you need to do is to turn on your faith. Your faith is the light that dwarfs all from some dark moments. And folks, we will all have dark moments. Amen? But you can choose what happens to you in that dark moment. You can choose to have direction. You can choose not to stumble. You can choose to be in control. Oh, but if you turn on fear, you will find out that that's when you begin to stumble on furniture, stumble upon doors, walk on doors, hit your leg on stools and on, on, the, on, on the bed. So I want to encourage you today, quickly, always turn on faith when you are in a dark situation. Because of my time, I'm just going to rush. We read in Mark chapter 5 this afternoon, the story of the woman with the issue of blood. This woman had a dark moment in her life. For 12 years, the Bible said she had a sickness that refused to go away. If as a matter of fact, the Bible said that woman had suffered many things from the hands of experts and physicians. She had spent all she had to get solution. That includes she had gone everywhere. And the Bible said she did not get any better. And to add salt to injury, he said she even grew worse. I pray that your case will never be like that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That was a very dark moment for her. That was a very tough moment to her. Her situation suggests to her that probably she's going to die in that condition and end up as a reject in life. May that not be your portion in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. But what the lady did was, he said, no, this dark moment will not control me. I have the choice to switch on the light in this dark moment or to remain in that darkness. And that's what I want to encourage you with this, this afternoon briefly. In your dark moments, in your dark hours, in your dark room, turn on the switch. Turn on the switch. Turn on your faith and turn off your light. How do you turn on your faith? Begin to think possibilities. That's what this woman did. She began to think, my healing is possible. My deliverance is possible. She began to reason, even if the physicians have forsaken me, even if the relatives have abandoned me, even if the church members are no longer praying with me, if my friends and associates are avoiding me, I'm still not to give up on myself. She turned on her faith. So I want to encourage you in the times of difficulty, in the times that things are hard for you, are tough for you, refuse to turn on your fear. Turn on your faith. Amen. And how do you turn your faith? 
begin to think possibility. She began to tell herself, they forsake me, but I will not forsake myself. I will not forsake my healing. I will not forsake my dream. I will not forsake my goal. I will not forsake my, 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 my destiny. Let me tell you today that you must never count yourself out of success. You will never succeed in Jesus' mighty name. Don't count yourself out of victory. You will have victory in the name of Jesus. Don't count yourself out of breakthrough. You will break through in life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As I'm speaking to you today, this same moment, whatever you believe God for, as I'm speaking right now, is still possible. Amen. I said it's still possible. Amen. It's still possible. Amen. Can somebody shout, it's still possible? Amen. Say it again, say it's still possible. Amen. Is it healing you are trusting God for? That healing is still possible. Amen. Is it breakthrough you are believing of? It's still possible. Is it a new job? It's still possible. Do you want a new schedule? It's still possible. Are you trusting God for promotion? It is still possible. Oh, yes, you can tell me it's been 12 years that I've been believing on this thing. Hear me? The 13th year, it will be possible. Yes. And 2017 is that 13th year for you in Jesus' name. Yes. No matter what happened, as long as God is alive, it is still possible possible. How do you turn on your faith? Think possibility. Think possibility. Even if the pastors, I've heard some pastors say that they've prayed for some people when they see that person, they dodge. Even if the pastor gives up, don't give up on yourself. Say amen to that. Yeah. Even if they've stopped praying for you, don't stop praying for yourself. You cannot give up yourself. Just turn on your faith and turn off your fear. That's what this woman did. She turned off her fear. We were made to understand that she was at risk, even going out. She was at risk, but she turned off her fear. And every dark thought that I can be killed, I can be molested, I can be, I can be, I can be lynched, I can be do this, it began to fade away. Think possibility. So instead of turning on her fear, she turned on her faith and her hope. She turned on her expectation and her belief in the Lord. And as she turned on her faith, she began to take the right steps. She began to take the appropriate steps towards her miracle, towards her solution, towards her healing. So as Christians, that's what I want you to do. When a dark moment comes upon you, turn on that switch, that light. Because each step that that woman began to take began to increase her chances of miracle. Began to increase her chances of being delivered or being set free. It increased her possibilities. As she was thinking, if only I can touch the hem of his garment. If only I can move closer, my healing is possible. My healing is possible. You see, in ministry... As a pastor, I have been faced with many, many, many dark moments. And I mean, these dark moments, they were enough for me to give up. I won't lie to you that many times I've wanted to quit. In ministry, dark moments have come. But each time that dark may come, I always switch on. I always switch on my faith and switch off my fear. And occasionally somebody will come and relieve that, that moment onto me. And the fears will want to come back. And suddenly I will just begin to think. I say, wait a minute. God can still make a, des I mean, a garden out of the desert. I said, wait a minute. The Lord can still open doors when another door closes. I said, wait a minute. God still has the final say. I turned on my faith. Let me share this with you. Your faith. When you turn your faith, your faith is the such light you use in the dark room to look out for your solutions and your miracles. Amen. When you turn on your faith, it's a such light. It looks out for your miracle. It looks out for your breakthrough. It looks out for what you are trusting God for. So anytime you find yourself in that, that situation, turn on your faith and turn off your fear. Can somebody say amen to that? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So this is what the woman said. Say it doesn't matter if you are bad or rejected and delayed. And you have been standing upon the Lord. Please simply turn on your faith. As a believer, 
that is your strength that is your power it is what brings the possibility think possibility think possibility it is possible yeah. your face searches answers to problems it searches answer to your challenges it searches for the power you need it searches for possibilities so when you think listen to this when you think possibilities you will begin to speak possibilities say amen to that amen. And that's the next thing this lady did she began to speak possibilities how else will you turn on your faith begin to speak possibilities to yourself this lady began to think thoughts of possibilities and this encouraged her to make her move towards the source of her miracle sometimes when you don't speak when you don't think possibility the fear will get over you she stepped out and the crowd was so thick she stepped out and the crowd was so much there were people with bigger muscles there the atmosphere was very risky the competition to touch jesus christ was very fierce but she kept on telling herself if only i can touch the hem of his garment i would have loved to hold his collar i would have loved to hold him with both hands but the competition is so fierce but if only I can touch the hem of his garment. She did not only think possibilities. She began to talk possibility to herself. Amen. Look at your neighbor in the eye. Say, I'm going to make it in life. It in life. Say, I am a victor. I am a victor. Say, say, neighbor, I'm better than you. <laughs> say it again. Say, I'm better than you. <laughs> okay, say, neighbor. Yeah. Say, neighbor. Yeah. Pastor Dele is better than all of us together praise the lord amen. think and say possibility for yourself praise the lord amen amen, amen. amen. say to yourself i will make it amen. each time i drive past that land i said we will build it amen. in the mighty name of jesus amen. how i don't know but i know this we will build it amen. when i don't know but i know this we will build it through whom I don't know, but this I know, we will build it. I know one thing, the Lord will make you to accelerate progressively this year. I know one thing, you will receive your surprise this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 5, verse 28, she said to herself, I will make it. Always say to yourself, you will make it. She said, if only I can squeeze a little bit more, I will make it. If only I can push a little bit more, I will make it. If only I can shove a little more, I will make it. May I tell you, if you tell yourself, if I only can pray a little bit more, I will make it in line. If I can try and fast, I will make it in the name of Jesus Christ. If I can go to school again, even though age is against me, I know I will say make it. Turn on your faith and turn off your fear. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And the more she speaks to herself, the more the power of miracle for her healing becomes possible. The more she moved closer. I think I can make it. She began to move closer. I think I can make it. She can be move closer. The more you speak to yourself, the more you will make it. To yourself, speak possibility. Speak possibility to yourself. Speak possibility to yourself, even if you are afraid, speak it to yourself. Even if you are ashamed, speak it to yourself. Even if you are embarrassed, speak it to yourself. Amen. Say it is possible even if I don't know how. Let me say this. What you speak to yourself is much more important than what you allow people to speak to you. What you speak to yourself is so important to your destiny than what people speak to your life. Because as you speak possibilities, you are turning on your faith and you are turning off your fear. And let me share something with you. Let me just use modern analogy. The words we speak, they are with you. I'm sure you know that. It's like this. When you speak, let me use for those who are into computer. When you speak negative words, it has heavier gigabytes than positive words. Gigabytes, am I right about that? Giga, giga is a bigger one. It has bigger weight, praise the Lord. Just use analogy says. And the more negative word you speak, the more 
space it takes in your mind. Amen. The more space it takes in your mind. Amen. If all those malware, what have you, enter into your computer, what's going to happen? It slows the, of, of the operation of the computer. Am I right about that? So when negative, when more of negative words come into your life, it slows down your life. Sometimes when you turn those computers off, you are frustrated. So when there are more negative words in your life, it leads to frustration. So what you should do is turn on your faith. Begin to speak positive words. And each positive word that you speak will begin to free those spaces for you. It will free and delete those words. It will free and delete words of failure. It will free the words of embarrassment. It will free words of shame. It will speak words of ridicule. Amen. Speak positive words to yourself. Tell yourself, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. Amen. It will remove anything that is not of God. If your husband says, you are ugly, tell yourself, I am beautiful. Amen. Words are very powerful. They are weighty. Amen. So what you need to do to speak more of positive words. I'm going to repeat again. Negative words carry more weight than positive words. Because I found this out. People, I don't know why, people remember their failures more than their victories. A lot of people remember their failures more than their victories. Always think about your victory. Always think about your victory. I heard the story of a man. He said, I can't remember who said it. He said he was playing basketball with his son. He said, and he also was playing basketball one-on-one -on -one with his son. And one day, he the son rather beat him on one-on-one -on -one in basketball. Amen? But he said, but in done in that basketball game, there was a time the boy wanted to go and do a layup, and he as the father, much older, knocked the ball, or blocked the ball powerfully. Blocked it powerfully that the ball went out of the court, went outside to the other area. So weeks after, they were somewhere, and the boy was boasting to his friends. He said, Daddy, tell our uncle and our friends, what happened the last basketball game we played? The father said, oh yes, I remember that blocking that I blocked you. And the boy said, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Tell them how I beat you during that competition. The man refused to think about the failure. He only said, well, my son beat me, but I had one victory that day. I blocked his shot. Amen. That is how life is. Think more of your victories than your failures. Think more of the step you moved, made forward than the one you made backward. Turn on your faith. And God will perfect the rest for you in the name of Jesus. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, David began to remember, began to think about the victories he had with the bear, victories he had with the, with the, with the, with the lion, and he began to speak positive. He said, today, Goliath, you are going to die. And that attracted this miracle. Two approaches. The enemies, they were thinking of what if Goliath comes and crush my head and break my hands and break my legs? What's going to happen to my wife? What's happened to my children? Two approaches. The same dark moment. So I want to encourage you today, my brothers and sisters, rely more on your positive thinking. Rely more on your positive words. Because that's what will grant you your miracle. Because you begin to empty spaces that fear occupies. Empty spaces that failure fills in your life. And at the end, you will have your victory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Bible said to us in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 8, it said, do not be afraid of their faces. Just go and speak that which is possible. Even if people say bad words unto you, I'm sure this woman, as he was moving forward, they would look at her with a very fierce and say, what is wrong with you? We came here before you. As you push forward, they will block her. But she did not allow what they say, what they do, to stop her from getting a miracle. She kept on telling herself, if only I can push a step further and touch the hem of his garment, I will have my victory. Turn on your faith and turn off your fear. 
Because your faith is your such light to your miracles. Praise the Lord. Amen. And Bible said the moment he touched the hem of Jesus Christ, Amen. what happened? Bible says immediately she received solution to her problems for 12 years. And this is very significant. And listen to this. When faith connects with power, the result is immediate. When faith connects with power, the result is what? It's immediate. Sometimes our faith has not connected to the power of God. Because we always turn on our fear. God would have loved to answer your prayers. But if it is full of fear, oh Lord, I beg you in the name of Jesus. I'm here in America. Don't let me be put to shame. Oh Lord, help me. Oh Lord, let me. Don't let, don't let me. Don't, 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 let, don't, don't let people begin to laugh at me from Africa. Oh Lord, help me. My, all my neighbors, they are doing well. Oh Lord. It's those are prayers of fear. Praise the Lord. But when you come and say, Father, thank you very much. Last year, I was about to put the shame, but you made me to have victory. Your faith must touch the power of God. Praise the Lord. God is not interested in your complaints. God is interested in what do you want me to do for you. Amen. You remember the story of the man by the pool of Bethesda. He said, what do you think I can do for you? He said, listen, me? I've been here for 38 years. I know everybody who have received healing is only me. I know my failures. There's nobody to help me. He's not interested in all that. He's interested, what do you want me to do for you? And that's why talk positive. Talk positive. Praise the Lord. All I did, what do you want me to do for me? Lord, I want you to help me to make these people to fulfill their destinies. Anyone whose life has a comma, restore their lives. That's what I want from the Lord. And the Lord will do it for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I repeat as I close. When you enter into a dark room, it is not what you meet in that dark room that determines what happens to you. It is what you do to the light. Amen. If you turn on the light, everything will be okay. Praise the Lord. If I turn off the light right now, some people will be afraid. Praise the Lord. Some people will be afraid. I, I hope my boss is safe. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Some people have phobia of the dark. But when you turn on the light, everything will be okay. Let me share this with you. And probably this will encourage you to always turn on the light when you are in dark moments. The moment you turn on the light, opportunities are bound for you. Opportunities are bound for you. And I dare say many of us here, we don't need the next prayer. We don't need the next laying of hands. We just need the next opportunity. And I stand here as a man of God, the Lord will bring it unto you. Amen. This month, in the name of Jesus, Amen. just the next opportunity you need. Amen. Joseph was in a dark moment for 17 years. And all he needed was just one opportunity. But each time he found himself as a slave, he would turn on his faith. As a prisoner, he would turn on his faith. When people forgot him, he would turn on his faith. And each time you turn on the light, there's great opportunity in that room. Amen. 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 Not only that, any time you turn on the light, possibilities abound. Praise the Lord. I said possibilities abound. People that said you can't make it, are the people who are going to be using your testimony for others to make it. Possibilities are bound when there's light. You can have direction. You can navigate dangerous paths. You can preserve what is in the room. Amen. Not only possibilities. When you turn on your faith or turn on the light in the room, then potentials are bound. Praise the Lord. I've said it in this church and I'm going to say it again. Some of you, you don't even know what you can do. Amen. If God will open your eyes to let you see the potentials you have, you will know that you are better than this. You are better. I speak to people in this church, and I wonder, man, this potential is enormous. Amen. This potential is enormous, but the problem is we bank too much on our fears. The fear has taken too much space in our mind. 
too much space in our mind. So that the only space we have for possibility is 0.15%. But today, you will free those spaces in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I say you'll free those spaces in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because I want God to give you immediate accelerated progress this year. Amen. If you're going to be your portion, why don't you say a big amen to that? Amen. Say a big amen to that. But I want to observe something in this story, and I will close on it. Very important in this story. There are people who are following Jesus that day, who are carrying their dark moments with Jesus. She came with her dark moments and followed Jesus. And there were many people touching the cloth of Jesus Christ with their dark moments, but they did not switch on their faith. So they didn't get the attention of our Lord Jesus Christ. But when this woman stretched on her faith, her faith connected with power, the Bible says, Jesus Christ said, who touched me? They said, but everybody's touching. He said, no. Somebody touched me with faith. And power was discharged. Praise the Lord. And the power to bring miracle was discharged. Please, please. Let me tell your neighbors, he said, please. please. Tell your neighbor, he said, please. please. Tell your neighbor, pastor said, please. Please. Don't carry your dark moments following Jesus all over without turning your light. Don't begin to go from one church to the other with your dark moments without turning your light. Don't follow one prophet after the other with your dark moments without turning your light. Don't go after one program after the other without turning your faith. They followed Jesus with their dark moments. And they left Jesus with their dark moments. But you know what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 99? He said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden. He said, learn of me, for my yoke is easy and his burden is light. And then I will do what? I will give you rest. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. As you said rest, it will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Say rest. That is, you are seeing possibility. I will have rest. From this lack, I will have rest. From this trouble, I will have rest. From this misfortune, I will have rest. From this rejection, I will have rest. From this denier, I will have rest. From this delay, I will have rest. In the mighty name of Jesus. If your husband is troublesome, he said, I will have rest from him. If your wife is always nagging, I will have rest from him. Praise the Lord. Well, pastor, is difficult. I always say that. I will have rest from her. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And true, true, when she comes home, I will have rest. Praise the Lord. Because I speak possibilities. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm just telling you the trick. Praise the Lord. That is why we are still married for 23 years. I speak possibilities. Praise the Lord. If I see, see that she's growing, I say, I will have rest. From this lovely woman in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Sometimes I will say, Lord, she's a proverb 23 in the name of Jesus. And God works in her. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm very positive. She does the same thing for me also. Praise the Lord. And that's why I call it. Sometimes I, say, I will give it to her when I get home today. Praise the Lord. And when I open the door, I say, How are you today? Praise the Lord. <laughs> I know something has gone on somewhere. Her faith has touched power. And God will discharge rest into your life. Can you rise up today? What do you want God to discharge into your life?